we've never been able to successfully get both drivers into the top into the top 10 into the points hey, hey guys what's going on it's your favorite motorsport manager with the f1 mod spot the aussie right here checking out your live today at silverstone gp and look at it it's downpouring it's raining cats and dogs i think that's what you say in the uk at least I don't actually know, I've only been there once and it was only for like three or four days I was in London. I've got some big updates and some big problems. First of all, as you can already see, the bigger camera in the corner, zoom zoom. Now I had a, a, a YouTube comment on one of my videos to say, can you actually make the camera bigger? Because I want to actually see your facial reactions and have a bit of a laugh at that because I can see it but it looks like an ant. Unfortunately, my Shadow Play software that I use, I can either have a camera that big, that big, or like that big like the, the size it is right now so let me know in the comment section below if you actually like the fact that the camera is this big if it blocks too many of the important instruments for you guys let me know the only things that you can't probably see is track grip which is, doesn't make that much of a difference and i think you'll be able to see water on the track because i can pop that up and we'll show the graph for the next couple laps but we are going to start off at a rainy silverstone gp we're up to um the eighth ninth round in this championship we're currently doing a great job. Like, let's not, let's face it. We're fighting above our weight, punching above our belt. I should say, not fighting above our weight. What the hell? But we're fight, we're punching above our belt. We're doing a great job with Leclerc and Schumacher. I've had a little bit of a problem though, is that when I went to renew Schumacher's contract because his uh, contract ends in six months. Turn the air conditioning on because it's absolutely boiling in Australia right now. It's going to be like 50 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit Celsius next week. I don't know how we're going to live through that. Went to renew it and it said, I'm not interested. Now, I've actually asked a couple of people on, through Reddit just to say, hey, is this because I brought down his morale to 70% because we demoted him briefly while he had those trait issues. Remember how he had trait issues? Um, so his house was on fire and it brought everything down by negative two. I didn't want him. I actually wanted to put Charles Leclerc in the car so, uh, as well as Rossi to get the car in, in the right spot and get the money as well. So that brought it down to 70%, but I don't actually think it's that. I think it's because of our results. Because we're not like a main contender championship team, I think he's just not interested in renewing his contract on that basis. But just in case it's morale-based, what I've done this particular race is I've given Schumacher the better car out of the two. I actually do favor Leclerc a little bit because I feel like his traits, they're almost equal on stats, but one particular trait, easy on fuel, means that he burns less fuel. Which is big in this championship when you don't ha when you ban refueling. So I've given Schumacher the better car. We're going to emphasize him to do much better. Remember, the second car isn't that far off the first car, but there's a big enough difference. I've actually qualified in 11th position. It's the best I could do in the conditions. It was dry conditions. Everyone was able to do laps. It's really unfortunate. I've got the setups as close to 100% as I possibly could. That's a 100 or well, 99% for each driver. We're going to go into attack mode straight off the line. And the reason why we want to do that is because it's actually raining and it's, only, it's going to stop raining about lap 13 ish lap 12 and we should be able to switch straight to dries and see where the track lays out so let's get into the silverstone gp i'm pretty excited for this race it's a bit of a breaker as you can see there's a new animation in front of us because enzoli has actually updated his mod he's updated his mod with a new patch here's our order it's hamilton vettel ricardo verstappen with the neck brace because he must have been in a bit of an accident just before hulkenberg bottas We've got Alonso, it's actually moving a lot slower. Van Dorn, Perez, Magnussen, Schumacher in 11th. One spot off from getting our bonus payment. That's a big, big, big miss for us. We've got Habsburg, we've got Faruku, Giovinazzi, Leclerc, Nick DeVos, Palmer, Robert Kubica, Sergio Sikrin from ArtGP, and Jensen Button in 20th position for the Williams. So that's a big surprise. ArtGP seems to be bunching above their weight a little bit by getting Nick into, fifth, into 16th, I should say. Right now, we want to start this race. Let's see how we go. The lights are on. Four lights, five lights. And it's go, go, go at the Silverstone GP. How are we going to start here? Schumacher gets a, a bog start. I actually like the look of this track. The track is well lit up, given the fact that they um, have the fog lights down at that circuit. And Schumacher is now battling his way through. He's actually shuffled all the way back into 14th already from the start of this race. Everyone seems to be going into high mode straight from the get-go. So we might actually do the same. Um, if, even though we've already dropped down to 15th and 18th respectively. That is not a good start by us at all. Down into 16th position and struggling. Habsburg is already on a conservative driving style. I'm not sure why he'd want to be doing that so early in the stint. But either way, we are now struggling. Now it's up to us to kind of make some positions, put a little bit more pressure on the guys ahead of us. Who do we have ahead of us? Tavros and Kibitza. We should be able to pass them. Schumacher makes the pass. He's going to be up into 
14th nearly. No, 15th. He stays in that position. Hamilton posts the fastest lap of the race. He, he retains that, that pole position. And Schumacher goes up into 14th. And so does his teammate. Leclerc is able to follow him through. Habsburg drops back into 15th position himself. So Hasberg must have some sort of a mechanical issue because they've put both of their cars in conservative mode and Schumacher is saying, look, I need to pit for wets, but we're not really going to have to pit for wets because it's only going to be wet enough for one lap to have wet tires. So that's not worth it for us. We're, we're, we're you know, happy to push these tires as much as we possibly can because by that lap that we have to change the tires, we will. And once this race starts to spread out as it is, we'll start to push back a little bit from our current mode. So the track is now starting to dry up quite significantly. So let's get our drivers to start slowing the pace down a little bit. Furuku, Magnussen and Perez are our targets for this race. Because of their base 8th, 9th, uh, 8th, no, 10th, 9th, 10th and 11th, they're probably our basis of the guys that we are targeting to kind of over, over leapfrog and um, perhaps... Um, Perhaps do a bit of a number on them and uh, get those positions back. As you can see, both of our teammates are currently fighting for position. I don't want that to happen so much. I actually, I'm all right with them fighting for a little bit, but we'll just have to keep a cl clean eye on, out on those two. We don't want to see a crash resulting in us both having to pit and then, you know, screwing up our race. We've seen that previously where both of our drivers have crashed. One then had to do a, a pit stop penalty. Both cars had to come in. But one thing I will tell you guys... The intermediate tires, where do they work the best? When the dampness of the track is between 10% to 65% damp. And as you can see, the track has been between 10 to 65% damp that whole time. And I know this because I've been speaking to one of the coders, had a quick chat about it. I actually thought, I said, this is what I think. And he said, that's correct. You're bang spot on with the numbers. In fact, there's a Reddit post I'll actually put down in the in the section below what, he, or what another guy said and he pulled from the code himself. But... You lose 10 seconds if you're on intermediates and you're on the wrong set of tires. So if it's too wet, you're on intermediates, you lose about 10 seconds a lap. If you're on wets and you should be on an intermediate track, you'll lose 20 seconds. If you're on slicks, you're on the wrong uh, set of tires, you're the wrong, the wrong, you're on slicks and it's a wet track by any means, you will lose 20 seconds a lap as well. So intermediates is a pretty safe bet to remain on till that lap. It looks like we're going to have to pit four soft tires very shortly but when we do pit for soft tires what's going to have to happen is we're going to only do about five to six laps on the softer compounds then immediately come in and immediately go back on your intermediate tires i can already see that there's a bit of a bit of a hump coming up very shortly but we'll have to keep a close eye on that so far this race has been pretty spread out for us we are conserving as much fuel as we can they've got excess fuel in their tanks at the moment but remember oh surikin's also retired I didn't even notice that. I've been too busy talking about Reddit and um, having our general chit-chat. Hamilton will probably lap us this race. I mean, it happens every race. He's got the much better car. He's doing 123s. Look at that. Versus our 127s. So that is a huge difference between us. And we might actually start to push on these set of tires very surely, if not the next lap. Because I feel like we're only going to have to do about three to four more laps on these before we go to the softer compounds. And then we can get those tires to really work. We'll only have to go to the soft compounds for looks to be about seven laps at most. So let's go out now. Let's start to push these tires as much as we possibly can. Put a little bit more pressure on the guys ahead of us. That's Faruku. We've got into double fast mode because I want to I want to analyze the track a little bit more. As long as we don't get below 20% in the tire tread, we'll be that's a healthy buffer to have. But it will be... Ooh, looks like most of the cars are actually going to pit now for their stop. We'll go around to one more. We won't be penalized that much. Leclerc's going to come out. And one good thing about Leclerc coming out is he, he w might actually hold up a couple of these other cars. The other thing to note is, is anyone else having to double stack? And that will most likely be the case. Schumacher ends up going past Faruku, so he's actually been able to make that pass stick. That's a good move by him. We're going to have to double stack our cars unless we keep Leclerc out for one more lap. We might do that just to hold up the guys behind us. We should be able to do nine laps. So that's a really safe really good buffer for us to be able to do that the other thing to note is we can push on those tires because we're not you know we're not in any stress tire uh part reliability is fine we're going to come in the pits we're being caught quite rapidly now by verstappen i kind of thought that to be the case anyway because he has the much better car leclerc currently in 10th position what we might get him to do is as i was just saying we might just rub his race out because at the end of the day if we're not coming in the top 10 we're not getting the points and it looks like schumacher is probably going to be the only car to be in our team to be able to do that 
So we'll now come in the pits. We'll get Leclerc to do another lap because we it's a bit of a waste if he double stacks. But at the same time, he's going to be holding up people that are going to be coming through. So that's good for us. And who's that? Is that? That's Perez. So we're going to be holding up Perez as much as we possibly can. That's what we wanted to see. We'll get him to go into push mode and to overtake. He's already been overtaken. Who's that next to him? That's Faruku coming up. Schumacher is in 12th position. No, that's Van Dorn actually behind him. So Schumacher is still in front of Veruku. He's behind Magnussen. We do have a cleaner set of... Um, we do have a cleaner set of soft tires. So we're going to be able to push straight from the get-go. So that's a bit of a buffer for us. The fact that we're able to wait one more extra lap. And it didn't cost us anything, really. To be honest, it didn't cost us that much. In fact, it might have been better for our strategy. As you can see, Vettel's now pitted. And Ricardo, and they're, you know, they're so far behind Hamilton, it's not even funny. But they're still in front of Alonso. They've been able to leapfrog Alonso, so it worked out for them by pitting one lap later. So how are we going to look at Leclerc? Leclerc's still going around. Is it going to be much of a point to keep him out there to hold up Magnussen? I don't think so. I think he's going to be completely outdone there anyway in like a second. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to pit him right here, right now. He's done the job that we needed him to do. Let's do a fast pit stop. Why not? Just get him in there, get him out. And uh, I'm sure you guys understand where I'm coming from because he's going to be out of the race anyway. Schumacher then moves up back into 11th position. Here comes our boy Leclerc. He's going to be able to push straight from the get-go. He's dropped back into 16th position. That's what we kind of expected. But our gap... Look at that. Button is actually still in 13th position. So Button's been able to jump from 20th up to 13th. That's a big move by him. He's probably the big mover of the race. Track position is so important. Getting a good... Um, Getting a good, really good, you know, starting position on the grid just goes to show you how much it pays off because he's that far behind simply because he started back in 20th. And by starting in 20th, that gap is still about 13 seconds. He's probably faster than Veruku. He's probably faster than Schumacher. He's probably faster than Magnussen. In fact, he should be in the top eight somewhere. But the fact is, he's been screwed over by his track position, his qualifying time. We're actually now catching Magnussen quite significantly. You've got to remember, Magnussen is on... What tires is he on? He's on medium compound uh, tires. He's got much more tread than us, but the chat's not going to matter. So we're going to go into overtake mode because we want to pass him as soon as possible. We don't want to be held up. We don't want to be pushed back into Furuku. There we go. We've made the pass stick. It's happened. And now we're going to be on a bit of a journey. Let's go into high mode. Let's push as much as we possibly can. Actually, you know what? Let's go into overtake mode. We've got excess fuel to burn off. Why not burn it off while the track is still dry? So, the likelihood of an accident happening is much less. Leclerc is actually up into 13th position, so he's been able to fight his way past Giovinazzi, Habsburg, and Button. I don't know how he was able to do that. I wish I saw that on the replay. That is amazing that he's been able to do that. So, Leclerc is not out of this race just yet. He's got a lot of tire tread to get through. And we're currently using up a little bit more fuel than what we need to, but we're catching Van Dorn. The gap is down to two seconds. It was significantly greater at that time. How much tire tread do we have left? And I expect that the track will be damp in an estimated three to four laps. So let's go back into neutral mode while we kind of save those tires as much as we possibly can. Remember, we don't want to go below 20% tire tread. If we go below 20%, that's going to be a bit of a danger zone for us. But we are catching Van Dorn. We are catching the main Ferrari in this race as a race engineering car. So we're up against them. We've fought with Ferrari before when we were racing for um, McLaren. There you go. We've made the pass stick. So Schumacher gets past Van Dorn. Van Dorn's on the medium compound tires. We've made it stick. We've made it stick quite well. We've actually pushed away from him a little bit as well. And Schumacher now has less fuel on board in order to finish. But I still expect us to get lapped by Hamilton. In fact, there he is. He's actually just past Leclerc. Leclerc has a lot of excess fuel to go. So let's get him to push, 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 push as much as he possibly can. He can even snag a 10th position. You never know. Something crazy might happen. The guys might have technical issues. I doubt it, but you never know. But at the moment, Schumacher doing an amazing job in 9th position. I can see a little bit of an emblem above Perez's head. That's because he has a mechanical issue of some sort. We're going to have to last a little bit longer. Let's go back into Schumacher's uh, medium mode to kind of conserve the fuel. We're down by 0.76 at the moment in 1st position. Is Bottas already coming out? So Bottas has just pitted. I think he must have used up his tires in time. And remember, that's because he pitted a lap earlier than us because he had to. Well, that's what he thought the right call was. And obviously, he didn't have enough tire tread to keep going around. So I'm a little bit worried about Schumacher's tires. If he can just get around to do one more lap on the tread that he's on, that would be absolutely amazing. That's what we're trying to aim for. We're going to do the same with Leclerc. We're going to put him on to 
the other mode. Let's get him to go into low mode while he gets passed again by Hamilton. We've actually gotten past Hamilton. We've actually fought back beyond Hamilton somehow. And now it's starting to rain. But you know what? The track isn't going to be damp enough. Let's just sit it out there for a little bit. Let's see what's going to happen. If we pit, will it go up to that, that temperature that we need? Is anyone else going to pit? Verstappen pits, so that's a pretty good cue that we need to pit. Is Perez Perez is pitting? So I reckon it is going to get damp enough by the time Hamilton gets around because the stops take about 30 seconds. So let's play it safe. We're in a good spot right now. We can pit while we're eighth or we can risk it and really gain nothing out of it. If we do an extra lap, we're probably going to get nothing out of it. So let's pit for Schumacher now. Go to the intermediate tires. Fast stop. Why not? Let's leave it in fast mode. See where he comes out at. And get him to come in. Yes, he goes in. So we just made it just in time. We're going to do the same with Leclerc. He's actually following Hamilton. He was able to outlap himself, which is kind of not what we wanted him to do, but he was able to do it anyway. Um, uh, go to fast mode. Pit stops. Good, good, good. In he comes. So Schumacher, there's a, there's a mistake. There's a mistake with Schumacher's car. It's going to cost us. Wow, we've just come out ahead of... Who was that? Who was that that we just come out? We've just come out ahead of Van Dorn. We've lost time to Bottas. We've lost a significant amount of time to Bottas because we had to pit anyway, but that's okay. We're now fighting for that 8th position. The 8th position should still be ours. Should we be able to hold that gap? 8 seconds is a killer. We would have still been out of, out of reach from um, Bottas. Like, that's a reality of, of the fact that he's above 16 seconds and 17. He's in a much better car anyway. But the reality is, because we've now come out because of that mistake, we're now under a lot of pressure from Van Dorn. Van Dorn's going to push us. He's pushing that car right now. He's pushing it as fast as he possibly can. It's a Ferrari versus a race engineering car. Leclerc is back into 15th position. He's passing these other cars that declared not to go into the pits for their pit stop. He's actually been able to pass these guys quite easy. So it just goes to show that that was the right strategy. He goes by Leclerc. actually unlapped himself from Vettel. Hamilton is on the right tires. Who's that behind us? Is that another car? Faruku? We might even... Leclerc might even be able to fight up to 10th position. Where's Magnussen? Magnussen is just that far ahead. So we're going to get Leclerc to push. He's got 1.5 laps of excess fuel, tire tread. The other guys will have the excess tire tread as well. But we're going to get Leclerc to push. Remember, he's good on fuel. He's good on the numbers. He's good on saving as much as he possibly can. So we're actually going to get him to push as much as we can. Leclerc's made a huge recovery. In order to come out back into 12th position, that's actually a really good job by him. I'm a little bit... Not a little bit. I'm actually really impressed by his driving at the moment, actually. He's, he's punching above his weight indefinitely. And now we've got Van Dorn. Van Dorn. And that's the thing for me. Will Van Dorn have any loyalty to us? Because we signed him up initially as a main driver for McLaren. Or has he completely forgotten about that and just wants to get the job done for Ferrari? Well, obviously, it's the latter. Because he's on the attack. He wants to make a move stick. Leclerc just done his personal best time. A 129.7. A 121.99. Which is actually the third or fourth fastest car on the track at the moment. That's how much burning fuel does for your car. When you start to burn it cleanly like that, that's how much of an improvement it makes. But he's, you know, he's doing a great job. How far is he behind Faruku? He's two seconds. So we've got two race engineering Ferrari battles happening. The, the front one, Schumacher and Van Dorn and Leclerc versus Faruku. Magnussen seems to be in a bit of a sandwich between that. I don't know. Magnussen seems to be out dropping back a little bit from that race pace. We might be able to make something of it. How is Van Dorn going? Is he still pushing? No, Van Dorn is no longer pushing. Let's go back into push mode. Let's just try to keep these tires as fresh as they possibly can. I know that we've only got about five laps to go, but it's really important that we kind of look after as much as we can. And it looks like Hamilton is definitely going to lap us. So that will mean that we have excess fuel to burn as well. The only thing I'm worried about for Hamilton is he's got a mechanical issue. He's got that little mechanical light above his name right now, which indicates he might have to come in and pit for it, which will push him back significantly. And that will mean that he might not possibly um, lap us. Leclerc just goes through into 11th position. That's, that is an amazing job as well. We can actually put him back into attack mode now because we've got 70% tire tread left with only four laps to go. Should Hamilton pass us? Hamilton will definitely pass us, but if he, if he has to pit, if he has to pit, it's going to push him back. We're getting a lot more pressure now from the guy behind us, and that is, of course, uh, Van Dorn. So we're going to have to go back into high mode as well for ourselves. In fact, let's go into attack mode. Let's not let Van Dorn get ahead of us. If Van Dorn gets ahead of us, that is not good. We want to try to keep this eighth position. We want to try to keep Schumacher happy. 
We want to try to keep our chairman happy because if we finish in 8th and we get Leclerc up into 10th position, that will definitely mean we're probably the 6th best team out on the track at the moment. Maybe even higher. I'd, I'd have to technically count. We've got... Let me just watch this while this is all happening as well. Where is... Okay, so there goes the blue flag for Van Dorn. While that's happening... I'm going into complete push mode. I want to push away from Hamilton as much as we possibly can. Because if he has to pit, that will mean we've successfully pushed away. But I'm going to have to go back into conserve mode very shortly. Like, that's the reality of the situation. Leclerc is actually still attacking Magnussen. Could he make this pass stick? That would be a huge move. Yes, he does. He goes on the inside. Can he hold it, though? No, he can't. Magnussen closed the door again. Remember, we don't like Magnussen. Every time we come up against Magnussen, there's always some sort of an issue where we get held up. We've actually pushed away from Hamilton quite a bit for at least a lap. I actually want to get lapped by Hamilton because that would mean... Well, if we don't get lapped by Hamilton, but... Magnussen... But Van Dorn does. You know what that means? That will mean... That Van Dorn is declared to have officially finished the race when he crosses the line. And even if we run out of fuel, that will also mean that technically we can still finish the race on zero laps of fuel. That That's a huge, that's a huge calculation I'm, I'm willing to take here. So if I push away from Hamilton, what was our last lap? Our last lap was a 126 and he did a 126. So if we push away, we keep a safety net between us and um, our boy uh, Van Dorn. And Van Dorn will be forced to finish the race. How was Leclerc going? Let's just save his fuel. He's got two laps to go. He'll have enough to get to the end. His tires will also have enough to get to the end. This is a huge result. We've never been able to successfully get both drivers into the top into the top 10, into the points. That's a huge result for us. Let's do the count of the teams. Hamilton, Mercedes, Ricardo, Red Bull, McLaren, Force India, Williams... Then there's us. So we've hit our target requirement by completing that. Oh, Schumacher's fuel is so low at the moment. Has he pushed away? Okay. We can technically allow Hamilton pass now. If Hamilton passes us, it's not that big of a deal. I would have loved to have finished the race by on that strategy, but the reality is, if you looked at our fuel load, we might not even have enough fuel to finish this particular lap, and that would be absolutely insane to lose it on this last lap. Blue flag for Mickey Schumacher. If he lets him through, which you will have to let him through, we're going to be under threat from Van Dorn immediately. 0.18 laps of fuel left. We've calculated this down to a T. We've been able to push a bit of a gap Back to Van Dorn, 0 0.03, 0 0.01. Look at that, he crossed the line with 0 0.00 fuel left. Eighth position. It's going to be 10th position for Leclerc. Both drivers in the points despite not having equal cars. Now, what was the gap back to Leclerc? It was only 8.5 seconds. So he did an amazing job. Leclerc actually went out for an extra lap on bad tyres. Held up as many cars as he possibly could to allow Schumacher to jump ahead. In fact, Leclerc held up Van Dorn. Leclerc actually held up Van Dorn enough in order for us to fight back for Schumacher to leapfrog. So that's another amazing job for teamwork for us. When you're a, when you're a mid to like, um, backpack car, you essentially need to work as a team with both cars and work it out in order to get the best out of the team. Like that's how it works, and that's that's benefited us substantially. So that's an amazing race for us, guys. I can't. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm stoked. Formula One logo. There you go. We're in the main game. We've gotten the points. We've done the job. Live timings. Let's have a look at our lap times. Our best lap time was a 121.6 by Schumacher. It's only 2.6 seconds off the fastest lap of the race. It's not that bad, actually. Standings. Ooh, are we going to get done for an illegal component? This is the illegal component check. FYI, they can usually find nothing in the car's risk of rule break is high. Both drivers have so many illegal components that I have no idea how it visibly doesn't have a sign to say car is completely illegal please defect us but guess what we're not even caught FIA have absolutely no idea that's why you see teams like Mercedes and and Benetton in the mid like 90s be able to get away with all those rule breaks because they've been able to catch nothing we've successfully gotten to the top 10 for both of our cars that is a first for us that is huge now will Schumacher officially sign up with us that is the big question if we show him 
the dangling carrot at the end of the stick. Will he say, well, this car actually has potential, and yeah, we might actually have a bit of a shot here. It's a bit like Alonso's story right now. He's he's saying right now the McLaren, you know, if we get the car right before season, it might have a good chance. How is Schumacher's morale? It goes back up to 100%. Not bad. Charles Leclerc goes back up to 100%. Not bad either. The relationship with the mechanics also goes up. We came six. Happiness. Alonso is... Uh, Alfonso do Alonso Bourbon. Is very happy with the team mark ability. Stays the same because we didn't punch above the next car. It's so close, but It is so close. 2.6 mil. That's a good payday for us. Can we sign up Schumacher? I just want to see what the go is. Is he going to be a happy chappy if we click renew now? Oh my god. That is a career saving drive for our team. We needed Schumacher. We needed Schumacher. That is that is absolutely amazing, guys. I'm stoked. I can't believe that Schumacher has agreed to sign back up with us. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. If you like the series, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe. I'm uploading videos on the daily. With our boy Schumacher and Charles Leclerc. That's that's big for us. Thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate it. And I'll check you guys out shortly. Shh.